All right. Well, welcome, everyone. Um, my name is Ryan Mooney Bullock. I am the executive director of Green Umbrella. And just wanted to point out that this uh, webinar is being recorded today. Hopefully you got that notice on your way in, but we are going to pause recording when we go to our question and answer session, um, just so folks can feel free to ask questions openly and not, you know, be worried about that being captured in perpetuity. Um, so we're excited to be chatting with you all today for our nonprofit membership webinar. Um, so if that's not where you meant to be, feel free to sign into the next one. Um, but this session is geared to explaining Green Umbrella's new and updated membership benefits for the nonprofit sector specifically. So thanks for joining us. We've got a great group of um, organizations and people signed up today. And in a little bit, we're going to give you a chance to weigh in on what some of your priorities are so that we can make sure we are speaking to that um, through the latter half of our presentation. But I'm going to kick it off with just a little bit of a background so you know why we've made updates to our membership, membership system and what those mean for our organization, for your organization, and for the region. So Green Umbrella is now the Regional Climate Collaborative for Greater Cincinnati. As many of you know, we have been serving as the backbone for environmental and sustainability work in the Greater Cincinnati region for 25 years. Um, we serve a 10 county region spread across three states. And over the years, we have connected hundreds of members, local governments, nonprofit organizations, educational institutions, and businesses, as well as passionate individuals through a collective impact approach to tackling the most complex and pressing environmental challenges that our community faces. And when we look at the type of work that we lead and participate in, um, we think of it as collaborative work that is helping to reduce emissions, create and protect thriving green space, build a resilient and equitable local food system, and support local communities to take action on their environmental and resilience priorities. And the connected and interdependent network of partnerships that we help steward are part of what makes Greater Cincinnati really a, a unique region when it comes to collaboration and environmental action. And we've seen this make a huge difference in attracting funding and talent to our region and really raising the profile of Greater Cincinnati across the country for this type of work. We officially launched the Regional Climate Collaborative in 2022 as one program underneath our umbrella, but we quickly realized that this framework had so much more potential and really speaks to who we are as an organization. We decided to grow the collaborative model from an element of our programming to an organization-wide framework. And we think this shift is so critical because we are just six years away from a major milestone on the path to slashing greenhouse gas emissions. And our region has a big part to play in that. We're growing in population and we have a lot of work to do to both decrease emissions and prepare for the impacts of climate change so that we can protect the health and quality of life in, and environmental quality in our region. Today, approximately 325,000 residents live in a community with a dedicated roadmap for climate action. That's a great start, but it's 2 million people short of where we could be. Green Umbrella is expanding our programming and the support that we provide to our members to ensure that all 2.2 million people in our 10 county region live in a community that's ready to take decisive action in the face of climate change. Because we know that as the climate changes, our region will continue to be more vulnerable to things like high heat alerts, flooding, landslides, air quality alerts, and all of the health impacts that those bring. But in addition to those specific risks, climate change is also a threat multiplier, meaning that it multiplies existing threats to public health, the economy, and puts our most vulnerable populations at even greater risk. But we see climate collaboratives as doing the opposite. They are opportunity multipliers. They offer communities the opportunity to share knowledge, resources, and best practices. They enable collaboration on projects that impact the entire region. 
and they improve our ability to secure funding. This type of region-wide effort helps reduce costs and improve outcomes so that our region is better positioned to weather the impacts of climate change and to build more resilient, equitable, and thriving communities. With the change in Green Umbrella's identity from a regional sustainability alliance to a regional climate collaborative, Green Umbrella joins more than 30 other collaboratives across the country. All of them are working on cross-jurisdictional climate action. And we're actually now the largest regional climate collaborative in the country, given our staff and existing programs. One of the things we're most excited about is weaving our existing programming and resources into this new regional climate collaborative model. Many of your organizations are already actively engaged in one of our collaborative teams or programs, and these are all continuing. Um, they are shifting a little bit in the sense that they are going to be more explicitly focused on the connection between their work and climate issues, and they will be directly plugging into regional and local planning efforts to craft policies and programs that address critical issues around food, resilience, buildings and energy, transportation, green space, equitable access to environmental quality and economic opportunity. So you can think of it there, they're gonna to continue to do what they're so good at, but elevate it to a larger set of audiences with a bigger impact. This new framework will prepare Green Umbrella and our region to support Greater Cincinnati through a massive transition, a dramatic drawdown of emissions and investment in equity-focused resilience to the impacts of climate change. But as you all know who have been working with us over the last decade or more, we are not gonna do this alone. We have always been an organization of collaboration, of partnerships, and this is true now more than ever. We need your help and your partnerships to get there. So while we see an immense opportunity right now, thanks to federal investment in climate issues, um, this slide is just a snapshot of two pieces of funding legislation related to climate issues totaling over $240 billion. And there are actually more opportunities available as well, just in the federal sector. That doesn't even touch um, private national philanthropy and other entities that are pouring money into this enormously challenging issue. Um, but it's gonna take a huge amount of work to make sure that this, not only this funding comes to our region and benefits our communities, but that it's done in a way that truly improves the health and well-being and economic opportunity for our most vulnerable community members, which is our ultimate goal in this work. We also need your help to raise awareness about how climate action intersects with so many of the issues our communities care about, from mental health, to affordable housing, to air and water quality, to outdoor recreation. We also need your help to advocate for decision-making processes that center community members who are most impacted by climate change and its threat multiplying effects. We need your help to attract funding and best practices into our region that's going to guide major transitions in our economy, culture, infrastructure, and education and workforce opportunities. We're hoping to apply for a bunch of grants, but we want to help all of our members and local governments across the region be able to apply for these opportunities as well and develop the capacity to not only apply for, but manage these key resources. So I'll give you one specific example, just so you get a taste of some of the, the opportunities that we're looking at and working on. So right now, the Greater Cincinnati Region has a $1 million grant to develop a region-wide climate action plan through the US EPA's Climate Pollution Reduction Program. And this project actually encompasses a larger region than we currently serve, so it's a 16-county region. Um, and so this regional plan will help get everybody on the same page and also leverage resources across the community to help us tackle more complicated problems and get more funding in. This planning grant is just the first stage in accessing four point up, you know, a small piece of $4.6 billion worth of funding that the EPA has made available for implementing the climate action projects that are identified in these plans. 
So we are just now in the process of um, developing what's going to be known as Thrive Together, a sustainability playbook for Greater Cincinnati. It's being led by this coalition of organizations. And we are going to be, we already are, reaching out to community stakeholders, residents across this 16 county region, which is our metropolitan statistical area, to invite you all to engage, inform, and shape this playbook so that it expresses your priorities and your concerns um, so that we can help bring in part of that $4.6 billion in a way that's going to benefit our most vulnerable communities. So this is just one example of how we're already engaging our members and their constituents in really informing these transformational projects across the region. All right, I'm gonna take a pause there uh, so we can get to know a little bit more about the issues that your organizations are focused on and what your efforts to date have been related to climate and environmental work. Um, so I'm gonna hand it over to Savannah who will lead our survey. Hi everyone, thank you for joining. So uh, we're just gonna launch a quick three question poll to get to know just a bit more about your priorities and what you're seeing in your communities. And we'll share out the results. Everything is anonymous. Uh, it's just a great way to see what's going on with folks on the call. So we'll take a few minutes to answer these three questions. All right, thank you everyone. So I am going to close out the poll and just share some of what we're seeing. Super interesting. Um, and I'm really excited to kind of connect with you further and learn more about what this looks like in your community. Um, but what we can see uh, is that, wow, we've got some high concern areas um, in green space and forestry, uh, mobility, transportation, social racial justice, um, flooding and water quality. Um, it's interesting to, to see kind of the the outlay across all these different issues. Um, and as you will hear, uh, we absolutely have member benefits uh, related to all these issues. So keep an ear out for things that you are seeing in your community and what we are providing to support communities. It also looks like, you know, when it comes to, has your organization addressed some of these issues? Uh, really cool to see that almost 50% of organizations um, have a consideration of these issues throughout decision-making processes. Um, and about 40% are working on a project related. Um, and about a quarter of folks on the line um, have examined that this is an issue um, that is uh, affecting the way that we work. And last, seeing now, you know, what is the biggest reason that your organization may or may not have been able to implement on some of these efforts. And top of the list, um, not surprising, um, especially considering we have heard similar refrains from local governments um, and other member groups that not enough funding and not enough staff. Um, so to that point, you know, I think you'll see a lot of exciting um, opportunities in what Ryan will share next. So thank you for taking this poll and I'll pass it back to Ryan. Awesome. Thanks, Savannah. And thanks everyone for sharing your thoughts on that. Um, so we are here to talk about membership. Um, and one of the things that we've been able to do through this new framework of the Regional Climate Collaborative is think through um, what is it that we could provide to our members that would really help them increase their impact and all of us collectively increase the impact we're trying to see and make in our region? So Green Umbrella has been a membership-based organization for the last 13 years. Uh, this is our first change to our membership structure since it was launched 13 years ago, so it was a little bit overdue. Uh, and our membership is for all types of organizations, so local governments, educational institutions, nonprofit organizations, and businesses who are interested in furthering climate action in our region. Through this new uh, membership structure, we're able to provide new and improved member benefits, more streamlined ways to work with our programs, and more opportunities for regional collaboration. We've designed our memberships to be more inclusive, more comprehensive, and more impactful. So when we look at inclusivity, 
Members now have three levels to choose from, participating, supporting, and leading, which are tailored to meet the budget needs and respond to the levels of involvement that members want to have in our network. Um, so I've pasted our um, membership levels and costs here. This is all available in the um, membership for nonprofits PDF that you can find on our website. Um, but nonprofits of all sizes can be a member at the participating level for free. And you'll see as I walked through, as I walked through the different member benefits in the, in the categories that we're going to talk through, that there are different benefits available at each level. But we wanted to make sure that there was a free option um, for either, you know, organizations that are just starting to get to know us or that have significant budget constraints um, that might not allow them to pay a membership due. But we also made sure that we have scholarships available. So there are scholarships available at the supporting and leading level for equity and justice focused community based organizations. And if you have, we have an online application, um, but you can also uh, reach out to Noby Kennedy, who is our person um, working on nonprofit membership in particular, with for more details related to that. Uh, we did do a lot of research and benchmarking against other regional climate collaboratives and comparable membership organizations to help determine our pricing structure. Uh, we know that it's a significant increase based on our previous membership levels, but we really believe that the benefits and direct resources that member organizations are going to tap into will um, more than make up for that cost. And will really, um, your partnership through membership with us will help again, you achieve your goals and access some key resources. So I'm going to go through the three different categories of member benefits that we offer. Um, the first one is training and networking. So nonprofit organizations like all of you are some of the most engaged partners in our existing collaborative teams. And it's really important to us that all of our partner organizations become members. That's one of the reasons we wanted to make sure that there was a free option at the participating level. And you can see that um, participating members can participate in all of our collaborative teams, tap into webinars, workshops, and trainings, and get into our member portal, which I'll share more about in a little bit, um, for up to 10 employees. Um, most of you I recognize and are already a part of some of the collaborative teams that we facilitate already. Um, through these existing programs, we have been convening communities of practice that are actively working to change policies and systems across the region and help the participants reach their organizations or entities' individual goals. That work is continuing, um, and we're also connecting the work across these programs so that if you're already involved in the Food Policy Council, um, but you own and operate a building. Maybe you want to tap into some of the benefits of the 2030 district to help reduce your energy use. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But we've also developed a new set of working groups through the Regional Climate Collaborative that are bringing together specific audiences to build skills, make connections, apply for funding, uh, and deploy best practices in community listening and local leadership. So these new groups will be open to members only. Um, so another great reason to join. And you'll be able to find details about all of these upcoming meetings, as well as other member-only events, trainings, and toolkits through our new member portal on our website, um, which if you're already a member, you should have received login information for. If not, we can certainly connect with you. Um, but there's this great new back end to the website that allows you to um, check out lots of exciting information, including um, finding out who else is a member of Green Umbrella and connecting with those organizations directly. So we now have a searchable member directory that has um, profiles for each of the members. So if you are looking for um, another nonprofit that does similar work or a business to help you on a particular issue, you can start here uh, and learn more about what's available through the Green Umbrella Network. Um, as always, we are continuing our marketing benefits related to membership. So a lot of you already tap into um, our green news and events calendar. That's all continuing. And we're thinking of uh, more extensive and creative ways to highlight member successes in our communications. 
because we know that one of the best ways to inspire change is to highlight the amazing work that's already happening. So we're creating systems for you all to share your successes with us so we can feature them and help you get the recognition you deserve for that work. Um, we've also, through this new and improved member portal, have created a way for you to submit your own jobs and events to our Green Jobs Board and um, events public events calendar. This jobs board is also for volunteer opportunities now. So it is um, searchable, whether you're looking for interns or full-time employees or part-time employees or volunteers, all of those things can get posted here uh, and you can connect more easily with the folks that you're looking for to help you accomplish your mission. We also have a cool feature on our member profiles um, they connect with the jobs and events. So if somebody in the public or at another organization, they don't have to be a member, is looking for more information about your organization, they can not only, you know, connect to your website and a, a description of you, but they can also find out what volunteer and job opportunities you have and what upcoming events you have. So um, we're more directly connecting the public with the organizations who are members. And then our third bucket of member benefit is resources and technical support. And, you know, honestly, that sounds a little bit dry, but this is where like the real work is happening. Um, so these are the resources that are designed to help you reach your goals and that increased level of impact. And I'll just call out a few examples. Um, we have already been doing pretty extensive tracking of technical assistance and funding that's available for all different types of entities, whether it's a local government or a nonprofit, that work is going to accelerate and be even broader than it has been. Um, Green Umbrella is part of a Tic Tac, a technical or a thriving communities technical assistance center for EPA region five, which includes Ohio and Indiana. And the goal of that Tic Tac is to build the capacity of local organizations, especially organizations led by and or serving people of color or other marginalized communities to get federal money into those communities so that they are directly benefiting um, from these infrastructure investments that we mentioned earlier. And so this Tic Tac for EPA Region 5 is building out um, grant writing assistance, um, capacity building support so it can train organizations on how to apply for and manage these significant grant funds. Um, and we're going to help connect resources from this Region 5 center down into our region and also share the feedback and challenges that we're facing in our region back with that um, bigger entity. There's lots more programming that'll be coming through the Tic Tac, which we'll share more about later. Um, but we'll also continue to provide letters of support for grants, um, encourage folks to apply for grants when we think that they make sense for you. So we do a lot of scanning of opportunities and share those out. And then we'll also be actively working on collaborative grant proposals. Um, this is something that we've had a lot of success with so far. We Over the last eight years, Green Umbrella has brought in um, about $2.8 million of federal funding in, and national philanthropic funding into our region, a significant amount of which has gone back out to partners, whether those are local governments or other nonprofit organizations, to help you do the work. And so we are looking for more and more opportunities like that to help your organizations access funding that you might not otherwise be able to tap into. We've also got lots of sustainability tools and models available through our member portal and through trainings. Um, and we've got an exciting um, climate fellowship program that we're building out for next year. Um, next year's program will be specifically focused on local governments, but in the future, we hope to expand that to nonprofit entities and other organizations as well. Uh, we also, as I mentioned earlier, are thinking through how do we better connect programs and this regional climate collaborative model. And so there's um, supporting and leading level membership benefits that are specific to some of our programs as well. So I mentioned the 2030 district earlier. Um, we are expanding the reach of the 2030 district and are encouraging folks who, again, have a building that they manage or own 
um, to think through how can we support you in reducing your emissions by decreasing energy use and water use. Um, we'd love to connect you with our 2030 team to do that. We've also got exciting resources around um, values-based food purchasing that uh, we have developed over the years through our work in our, our regional food system and lots more um, specific trainings and consultations we can offer based on your organization's interest. All right, we are gonna pause the recording and kick it over to you all for questions. We are recording. Thank you, great. Um, if you haven't already downloaded our detailed member benefits package for nonprofits, you can go to greenumbrella.org slash become a member or scan this QR code. We will also be sending it out in a follow-up email so you can wait for that if you'd like. Um, but it has all the details about benefits at different levels, pricing and how to figure out what price is relevant for your organization. We also wanted to share out a couple of exciting workshops that are coming up. So on November 15th, there is a webinar on federal funding opportunities for climate and food systems resilience that's um, presented through a partnership we have with ReAMP out of Michigan. Um, and then, as I mentioned earlier, we have a webinar on the public health impacts from climate change in greater Cincinnati. This is kind of the report out from a grant that we have been doing um, thanks to the Data for Equity cohort at Interact for Health and BI3. And Scioto Analysis is our data partner. So we're gonna be hearing um, some pretty exciting findings of what they've learned through this process. So tune into that. Um, that webinar will also be recorded and available in our member portal after the fact. So I know that you know these are big issues that we're talking about, Addressing them can feel kind of overwhelming at times and obviously is something that requires a, a commitment and long game. But if we do this right, if we bring together partners who are truly um, working with audiences across the region of around a variety of issues, we're going to be able to address social inequalities, secure exciting economic opportunities, and create a more resilient, equitable, and thriving Greater Cincinnati. And we hope your organization will join us as a member in that work. Please feel free to reach out to Nobi specifically or just membership at greenumbrella.org if you have any questions. Or if you're already well connected with one of our staff in a specific program, um, feel free to ask them for more information about what this change means for their work and how you're engaged in it. Thanks so much for being with us today and we will connect with you soon.